Chapter 11. On to the stage. Bazooka stared down the sights of her powered eight at the angel carrier. The white giant was coming toward her, and it suddenly stopped. The carrier lurked towards the source of the sound. That wasn't a sound. Thud. In cage two, Ava Zero One sensed it was being watched and raised its head, visor still closed, as if it could see through metal, stone, and earth to look back at its observer. It's moving, Aoba said. There was another loud noise, this time from the locks on the gantry supports as the seal latches snapped apart. The Ava easily tore free from the external restraint devices, which had been weakened, but not broken, up to this point. As multi-ton objects flew through the air like pebbles, smashing into the heat-blasted concrete wall, the crew finally came back to their senses. The rumbling of the destruction filled the room. Everyone, evacuate the gate, someone shouted, and the team started running. Suddenly, self-conscious of her part in the irrational revelry, Maya blushed. What were we doing? We can talk about it later, Ayoba shouted, pulling her arm. Toji looked over his shoulder. Shinji, are you doing this? Later, Ayoba repeated. Let's get out of here. Mizato tried to connect to Cage 1. Maya, Shifabuki, is this commotion coming from your building? Are you there? Someone cried out from the middle deck, and Mizato's eyes darted to the main screen which displayed an image from one of the exterior cameras. That's over at the far edge of the HQ. The dome of Cage 2 blasted into the sky. A purple giant burst out into the world, as if nothing in heaven or earth could stand in its way. Is that? Mizato squinted in disbelief. Unit 1? Still smoldering from the Azuka's full power EM attack, the angel carrier paid no heed to Ava 2 and began walking in the direction of the sound that wasn't a sound. Hey, Azuka prepared to launch another attack that she knew would be futile. Ava 2s hand dropped as the giant crouched to charge, when suddenly the ground began to vibrate, fast and strong, with no discernible source. Where's that coming from? Azuka asked herself, and then she knew the answer. The other side of Mount Kozuka. In the next instant, a figure came leaping over the mountaintop. The figure was huge, growing larger as it drew closer, and then it landed, cratering the earth and sending chunks of dirt and stone flying. Unit 1? Is that you? Shinji? Ava 01 didn't respond. The purple giant wore armor Azuka hadn't seen before, moving nimbly despite its rugged appearance. Without pause, Ava 01 went on the attack, slamming into the angel carrier's shield. The two giants stared each other down. Azuka let out a startled yelp. Shinji, this bastard's shield is strong. Put up your AT field before you get killed. But Ava 01 ignored her and repeated its charge. Has it gone berserk? The Ava pounded its fist against the carrier's shield to no effect, or at least that's what Azuka thought until its arm suddenly penetrated the shield amid a shower of sparks and grabbed the carrier's face. What? Azuka blurted. What's happening? Before she could recover from her shock, Ava Zero One had crushed the carrier's face. The Ava's hand and arm plates glowed, bands of interference dancing across the surface of its body. What, Azuka repeated? The Ava isn't projecting an AT field outside itself. It's generating one along the contours of its body. Nobody can do that, and even if they could, it would have mobilized them. How's Unit 1 moving? Not about to be discouraged by a crushed face, the angel carrier swung its staff. But Ava one dodged the attack and sprang into the air with such extraordinary force that the ground beneath its feet erupted like a giant column of water. Is this thing still in Ava? Ava one landed on the carrier's shield from above. The shield withstood the impact but was thrown to the ground along with its wielder. They bounced once before coming to a stop. The ground liquefied from the impact and when Ava one stomped on the shield again, the force of the blow buried the carrier more than halfway. Unit 1 is out of control, Azuka said. Masato, in the command center, must have sensed the same danger. Azuka, put some distance between yourself and Unit 1. The Ava isn't responding to us. There's a chance they won't be able to distinguish friend from foe. Is there, though? In that pulsing beat, Azuka felt her own heart yearning to join in. It was a feeling of something shared. Emotion, maybe. Together, they had kept the same rhythm. The angel carrier cleared away the sediment with its shield and lurched to its feet. This carrier, unlike the previous one, had two shoulder pylons resembling those of an Evangelion. 
On the fronts of its pylons were black sigils, and Izuka let out a breath as she saw them turn red and begin to glow. Those pylons! Azuka had seen those sigils and their red glow before, in the geo front, on the first angel carrier she defeated, in the empty cocoon that had held Zakiel. And this one has two on its shoulders? Ava-02 stood up straight. Azuka knew what she needed to do. She would wait for Ava-01 to leap at the carrier again, then she'd come from the monster's left, since the staff was in his right hand. She circled around the opposite side. Every moment mattered. Her internal battery was nearly drained. The moment she was waiting for came quickly. Ava-01 pounded on the angel carrier, and the carrier summoned its shield around its staff, swinging from left to right. Just as I thought, the carrier's focused entirely on Unit 1. A lucky win is still a win. Azuka aimed the power eight at the plate on the carrier's exposed shoulder and emptied the pallet gun. The rifle had been down to six bullets, and the railgun mechanism fired all of them so quickly that they made one continuous report. The shoulder plate shattered into red, crystalline fragments. Ava-01 dropped to all fours and ducked under the staff. The carrier continued its sweeping motion and threw the staff at Ava-02, hitting it in the stomach and sending Anzuka reeling. Through bleary eyes, she saw Ava-01 deliver a crouching kick to the angel carrier. It's so incredibly strong. Ava-01 had broken the carrier's leg in a single strike. Fighting through the intense feedback pain, Azuka shouted as loudly as she could manage. Shinji! Finish it! Shinji could see. He jumped to his feet. Ava 01's visor lifted and its eyes opened. The world was beautiful. The world was ugly. Shinji's mind raced to process the sudden abundance of information that filled his view. But before he could even comprehend the state of the battle, his body moved by instinct. The angel carrier had one shoulder pylon remaining. The plate! Shinji shouted, and everyone connected over Nerve Japan's communication link heard him. The heavily armored giant spun with surprising speed and kicked out with its right leg. A cloud trailed from the tip of its foot. When the kick connected, the overwhelming force shattered the angel carrier's shield and the remaining shoulder plate. Red crystalline shards scattered like spray of blood, only to vanish before they even hit the ground. The angel carrier collapsed like a marionette whose strings had been snapped, and it flopped onto the dirt, a corpse again. The mass production Ava quickly disintegrated. Ava-01 looked around. Ava-02 was kneeling, its internal battery fully spent. Somehow, Azuka's Ava seemed smaller than it had before. Azuka, what's going on? I'd like to ask you the same thing.